Welcome to the Academy of Esports podcast. I'm your host, James O'Hagan. I am here with Tyrell Appleton. He is the head coach of the New England College Esports team, which is in New Hampshire. Tyrell, thank you so much for being on the podcast with me. No problem. I really appreciate you for involving me into this podcast, and it's an honor. I truly appreciate it. Well, Tyrell, I saw you kind of, uh, I met, well, I haven't met you, but I I connected with you via LinkedIn probably about a year ago. And even a year ago, I was was thinking like, you know, there's something going on here, something good. You've taken this this college, no offense, I have never heard of before. And you've taken this opportunity and every day, it seems like you're you're getting you're getting something fantastic going or you're sharing something fantastic that's happening with your program but before we get to where you are right now tell us a little bit about yourself because i'll be honest you know the field of esports and education esports in particular is not exactly a field where we see a lot of african american males it's a very you know white or asian dominated field but you've not only are part of this field, you are taking a, an active leadership role and an active role in branding this all out. How did you come into this great opportunity that you have right now? I, that's a good question. I came into it as a freshman in college. Uh, after two of my teammates passed away from my competitive team in Gears of War, uh, I realized that gaming, before it was this esports title, had so much potential there Mm -hmm. was a lot of events going on things like mlg and things like that so my promise to them was to continue to keep my foot on the pedal and go with what we were starting out i had about 50 clan members i was the clan leader so it was kind of just natural for me to just look around to see where i could put my hand in Mm -hmm. uh so eventually i reached out to mike sepso from mlg and i wasn't the type to start from the bottom up Uh, A lot of companies prefer you to start that way. Mm -hmm. And as you go, you get to the top of the chart and you'll speak to the executives and things like that. But I want to speak to the source. I just felt like very confident in those moments. And he gave me the opportunity. And I was the first competitive Gears of War player to be partnered with MLG. And from that, I just took off and just seize the moment of my opportunity Mm -hmm. uh streaming alongside rice gum nade shot he's the owner of 100 thieves today Mm -hmm. and then eventually i graduated with my bachelor's degree i kind of was in and out of college basketball and soccer and when i got my mba in masters in business administration the opportunity to be the first head coach and create a collegiate program alfred as a varsity sport in new england college was a not New England College, but New England was available. And as the college itself, it helped put it up in, in a place where we were the 30th college in the NACE Association. Mm-hmm. So that's National uh, Association for Collegiate Esports. So you were the 30th school to join or you were ranked 30? I, just to clarify. The 30th member. Okay. Okay. So you were relatively young in, or uh, a relative. I shouldn't say relatively young. You're relatively um an older member of the organization. Yeah, I I would say like young and old because that's when, you know, like RMU and some of the older founding schools, they were in there for about a year or two. Mm -hmm. But I I just hit there before like the explosion hit. Yeah. Uh, So after that year, uh, you know, I had to focus on my degree. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was a, a bit time consuming. And I was just trying to balance a bit of both, but I was able to launch it and be part of the structural design and get the program kicked off to where it needed to be. So the person that came into my place, it was a lot easier for them to kind of fit it and create it into what they wanted uh, for the future of the program. Now, this Uh, now what we're talking about, we're we're still talking about New England College, right? This is College of St. Joseph. Oh, College of St. Joseph. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure I wasn't jumping too far ahead because, I, I, like I said, I want to get into that in a little bit because, again, that's where I think you've really made your mark. But, yes, I do realize you were at the College of St. Joseph, so I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I clarified that for people uh, who are listening to this. Yes. All right. So you you got things started at the College of St. Joseph. Again, 30th school in NACE. And, and you did reference um, the godfather of all this, Robert Morris University, which which launched the first scholarship. I know in my own professional uh, 
perspective, I was an educator in Rockford, Illinois. And just to share my story, had a, a brief conversation with an assistant superintendent who said he heard about these scholarships being offered at Robert, Robert Morris, which is only in Chicago, which is only about an hour away from Rockford. And he's like, can't we do something like that? And, and when I go and see Robert Morris, I talk to those people where I talk, especially with Kurt Melcher, who was part of the program to get things started. You know, I don't think Kurt Melcher gets enough credit for really launching this whole collegiate scene. Like he seems to be somebody who can walk into a room and nobody really knows who he is. But, you know, I I feel personally like Kurt Melcher deserves a lot of credit for what we're all doing today. Yeah. I guess he's a really humble guy. Yeah. You know? He is. He's, in, he's in, incredibly approachable. So if you reach out to him on Twitter or you see him at a conference, he's that kind of guy you can go up to and have just a casual conversation about. And he's very humble about everything with this. But um, to kind of transition, so you started the program at St. Joseph's, but then New England College, again, it's not a school that you know a lot of kids or adults even know about. It's, it's hidden away in New Hampshire. Those of us who are outside of New England, know very little about it, but you have put quite a mark uh, in collegiate esports with this college. How did this all come about? Oh, man. <laughs> so that's a very good question. Uh, that came about, so like I said, I created the first varsity esports program offered in New England, mm-hmm. and I ended up at New England College. It's just kind of a weird storyline. Mm-hmm. So the person that gave me the opportunity to launch at CSJ ended up here and he was kind of a voice for me and I went through a pool and I made it Mm -hmm. and once I became a consultant here that's when I really just dove in I said you know what I have to create this as the future of esports you know the epicenter um, that can offer a variety of programs and an opportunity for players that normally wouldn't become students. You know, you you have to get gamers to leave their homes, their rooms Mm -hmm. to go to college, something they probably wouldn't have thought of before. So I just kind of took it as a real challenge. Mm -hmm. It wasn't challenging, but I made it a challenge for myself to when you first walk in this space it's like you're not even on campus it's out of this world so when you see the wall wraps, yeah it, so just so people who are listening to the podcast uh what tyrell is showing <laughs> us is the space so you'll have to jump over to the youtube feed to try to check it out and, and again i can link to some of the other photos but uh what he's showing us is i can't believe what i saw it go ahead and, and tell us about the space a little bit so the space that has acoustic sound panels the wall wrap design is to kind of make the red pop. Mm-hmm. The red has that like cherry feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have broadcasting stations all around. And then we have three TVs. That's for our console gamers and things like that. We have four new sponsors, XSplit. Oh, yeah. wait, let's get into those. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So I'll get back to. Yeah, let's get back to that in a minute. Uh, I was giving away the sauce. Yeah. Sorry about that. So (laughs) again, when you look at this space, when you look at the program that you're doing, this doesn't happen just because you show up on campus and say, give me a whole bunch of money. There has to be a team of people, a group of people who buy into this idea. Again, you could be doing what you're doing with six computers and some folding chairs and a table, but that's not the experience that New England College is really trying to put out to the world, is it? You're, you guys are trying to make a mark in collegiate yes. esports with this. You're, you're yes. trying to attract a whole different group of students that I see with what you're trying to do. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So back to just, you know, designing this and, and creating the framework and blueprint for this program, it was just having the mindset of, I want to make this the epicenter of esports mm-hmm. in the New England area. Mm-hmm. And right now we're the premier esports program in New England. Uh, but it, it's not just to my credit, I'm very humble about a lot of things. I I always give credit to where it's due, and it's really the village. Um, a lot of other directors don't have department support across the board. Uh, some have maybe a coach, maybe mm-hmm. uh, their coworker that understanding, kind of like, huh, you know what, I, I support that. But it, it's really the vision of the president here. Uh, she's kind of giving me the green light to just go and 
give me the, the, the freedom to put this together and trusting that on, on my knowledge that I, I can get this done the right way to align with the, the goals and the visions of the college. Uh, the board is involved uh, across the board with the, the senior VPs. So everybody here uh, believes in this program mm -hmm. and to where it can go. And that, that just helps me so much more because it's like, ah, like, you know, it allows me to breathe and to just like, wow, I have the support of everyone here. So when I go in, the first thing I wake up, I wake up every single day, even if I had a rough week, you know, when things get really busy and we all get busy with work, mm -hmm. I'm still motivated no matter what, because I have students that are a primary uh, focus for me here. Mm -hmm. They continue to encourage me. They lift my spirit up because they're learning, they're growing. I want them to go into the industry and put their hands in many places and, and just touch things with the green thumb. And they can say, yeah, New England College, they, they created some good people. And I want those companies to leverage our students and, and utilize them in diverse places. Now, um, you talked about the students that you have, you're servicing and you're serving and, you know, you, you're a coach in a lot of ways, but you're all, and I will respectfully call you an educator as well, because you are working at a collegiate level. You are teaching kids in different ways. Um, is this your sole job that you have on campus or they have you doing other things as well? Uh, I would say I'm just all over the place. Even though I'm an esports, I'm like wearing many hats. I feel like even though I'm an esports program director, uh -huh. they haven't. They understand that I came from a place where I'm in social media a lot. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of companies, and you really are, and you're worth the follow on LinkedIn. Now I won't do TikTok. I'm sorry. I uh, that's just I'm 44, number one, and number two. Yeah, you know, we're getting to an age where we need to we need to pick our who we give our data to kind of like how we choose our food. We have to think about like, is this really a healthy choice? You, yeah. you've embraced TikTok. I have said, that's just not my thing. Uh, you know, I, I don't okay. know where the data is going, but you, you have grown a tremendous group of followers there. Efuse, you were just named, I believe the college onto the collegiate advisory board for Efuse and Efuse is a platform. Correct me if I'm wrong. To me, it looks like the Facebook and LinkedIn kind of got together and said, how do we connect these professionals and these high school and these college kids together to help f grow themselves and grow their their presence in the esports space? So you've got your social media platform is growing every day. Yeah, I, I do agree. Yes, it yeah. is. OK. <laughs> and and so you're leveraging your social media to in, in ways that, again, are attracting in, in, in good attention to the university that I see. So I should hope that yeah. they embrace that. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of other I, I can't speak for everybody, but I just speak for myself and in hopes to educate other colleges in, in d different places. Um, I feel like they shouldn't restrict the access that certain experts um, that are using social media uh, from putting things out. I know some places are different depending on the, the public or the, the private abilities of the college, but mm -hmm. I, I just feel like me being able to access and post things to uh, put shine a light on the program just helps it so much more. And, and that's the, the green light I'm talking about is that I try to put as as much content as possible out there and, and showing people hey like this is how we're doing it here and the one thing i told the kids is that let's set the bar it's okay to follow because you can learn by following there's nothing wrong with that and that, that's a very humble thing to do but sometimes it's hard. It, it's, it, it, it's, it, it is hard <laughs> it is hard to follow it is yeah. it some day, some days it's hard to look at people and go, man, I know they're really new to this, especially with esports because so many people are jumping into this nowadays. But it is hard on some days to just go, that person's so brand new to this, but they got a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, let's just, let's do it our way. Let's be different. Let's set the bar mm -hmm. and see if people follow. And I, I people, I've just seen the reactions. I've seen the interactions just from people with me on LinkedIn. I'm e-meeting you, electronically meeting you, mm -hmm. for the first time today. Yep. Um, and I could just tell just from vibes that, like, you know, you really mean what you say and that you're enthusiastic about esports. 
Oh yeah, uh, and I'm the I worst love- gamer, but I'm all I will I will fight tooth and nail for my students about this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's a very good thing, and I feel like there's a lot of people that are are looking for the right way to do it. I don't think there's a right way. I think there is creating what it should look like because the, the most overused word is the wild wild west yeah i've used you know? it i'm, I'm guilty <laughs> yes <laughs> i've used it you know <laughs> but i mean it is true i mean this industry is is at its infancy mm-hmm. and there's so many avenues that you can go down um not only was I doing this? I was a CEO of my own graphic design company, which was number one in esports at the time that I was doing it. But it's like, try to put your hands in, in different, uh, I guess you would say fields and plant the best fruit and see what it grows into. And some fruit may be small, some fruit may be sweet, some may be bitter, <laughs> but you will you just got to pick your poison with the craft and the route that you want to head down, if that makes sense. It does. And I, and I love how you're, how you're presenting it. It sounds, it, it actually helps to put me at a lot at ease personally hearing you say something like that, because again, I look at what you're doing and I won't say I'm jealous, but I'm definitely envious about just how much, I guess, freedom that you seem to have with your program how out there you are showing everybody what your program is about. And again, as you said, over Wild West being most overused, but I said, at least putting the idea of out there, out there about how things should be done, even though you don't necessarily succeed every day in getting it done. Like, for example, um, one of your social media posts, I saw you, um, everybody was having a workout. You were having kids doing air squats. You were having kids doing pushups and things like that. And you put that out there. And a lot of people, you know, I know pros are good at this. But we struggle with this at the high school level that I work at. A lot of our kids have never worked out a day in their life. A lot of our kids come to us because they've gone to video gaming for so long with the idea that I can do this and I don't have to work out. And we kind of have to have a discussion about like, we want you to work. We don't want you squatting 400 pounds and benching 200, but we want you getting your blood moving, getting your brain trained in these kind of ways, because we know it go- does good things for your brain when you exercise. It helps with your problem solving. It helps with dealing with anxiety and depression. And um, we also know that eating healthier, giving yourself, a, you're giving your body a healthy joys, drinking more water than drinking a lot of like, you know, gamer fuel as, as Mountain Dew wants to sell you. Um, those are important conversations to have. And while not everybody embraces that conversation, we are having these conversation in intrinsically motivating ways so that the gamers who do look at this and go, oh, if I don't make that bad choice at lunch, I make a good choice at lunch. Or if I make sure I get my sleep tonight, I'm going to be a better gamer tomorrow. And that also impacts how I do in the classroom overall. Then we've got a win win with all of this. Yeah. I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, I, I just feel like it's the small things that add up mm-hmm. and it's the small details because those things go a long way. Like, it's very hard for executive CEOs of the eSport organizations in which how is that's how I run my program mm-hmm. um, to kind of not just discipline but structure in a certain way their day to days and I know that a lot of orgs are, are changing that now mm-hmm. um, in terms of the NBA 2k league um, I love what Gen G is doing uh, with their their players. But there has to be some teaching moments, I feel like, for these these students and players because some orgs have players that come in, they get all this money, they splurge it. Some of them just post outrageous things on social media um, when there's partnerships and uh, companies involved. And, you know, it's kind of like, huh? Mm-hmm. So, like, for me, the working out aspect is, is not not just for disciplinary reasons – because I'm an athlete, I came from a collegiate background, um, it's to help motivate and give them a different outlook, to give them something that'll make them feel good, to rejuvenate the energy, and to show them, hey, this is this is how it should be, mm-hmm. because in athletics, this is what you do. It's not to say we're gonna mimic and copy athletics, but at some point, you have to take care of your health. You right. can't just sit in front of the screen. We don't want to keep the stereotype of gamers being lazy um you know and and when a parent hears oh wow they work out Mm -hmm. i've had great reactions to that 
wow, like you hear that? You hear that, John? You hear that? Yep. You hear that, Samantha? I even had a conversation today uh, in part of my role. I don't just oversee esports. I call myself the esports czar or, or you know, because I oversee five different programs and nobody else seems to know what to do. And I that's what I do. But I also my main job is I oversee our virtual learning and credit recovery programs for our school district. And I, I met with a young man today. He's a seventh grader who was expelled from his middle school uh, and uh, very bright boy. I mean, incredibly smart. And with any child. I always start the conversation off to break the ice, ask, what video games do you play? And what's amazing is, is some of them get really embarrassed or mom will look at them and go, yeah, he plays everything. You know, that was the, that was the comment today. And I go, I go, what, what I told, I asked the young man, I said, what game do you love to play? And he said, NBA 2K. And I said, it's funny you should say that. It looks like Wisconsin next year at our state association, we're going to make NBA 2K a game that's going to be competitive around the state. Not only that, but you know, we've got the Milwaukee Bucks. I know the guy who runs that team personally, if you're ever interested. And it's it's making those little bits of conversation that connect kids into the schools, which I think is what you're trying to do with New England College. I know we only have a few minutes left, but I want to get to two things. One, I want to know, how do you recruit kids? How do you bring kids into New England College other than the amazing things that you're posting on your social media? That's a great question. So... One of the ways and what really kicked off recruitment for me mm -hmm. is I was able to work collectively with uh, admissions and we I helped create the templates and the structure for different platforms like Discord, Be Recruited and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we have a good system set up. Uh, we recruited 35 fall uh, students and players. Mm -hmm. This, this recent fall that just passed. Mm -hmm. And that is about triple the national average. For most new starter programs, they recruit five to 12, depending on the game. Each game is his own team. Right. And then Ninja shared a post of our program last April. Oh, I bet that fall. helped. Yeah, that helped in, <laughs> in a huge way. And it, we were the only college that I've, I've seen him do that for. Uh -huh. uh, and it was just an awesome experience uh, to share with everyone and that kind of really showed his world because there's a lot of people from the ages of five to 18 or, or plus, but those are the primary ages that support him. Hey, this, you can do this, you know, you can go to college and get a degree and, and, and scholarship and, and things like that. Those things are available for you. And now the TikTok is kind of the extra push. Mm -hmm. I feel like you just have to be diverse with the recruitment mix it up and, and be a little bit different. A lot of people try to copy templates. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen uh, from one that I put out when I first started, when new colleges were joining and, and those templates that were shared in discord chat, I, I can't really say the channels. Uh, that's okay. One is one, I, I, one I will give is high school esports league and that's the primary one. But there are so many colleges that are in there now that everyone I feel like kind of shares the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a different approach. Like, you have to go to the students. You have to meet them where they are. And that's for you to figure out, I feel like. And that's hard for us. Um, I talked to some of our uh, coaches, our, 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 our traditional coaches, about how recruiting is done. And, you know, the NCAA has a very precise process about how recruiting is supposed to take place. Yeah. Right now, I feel it's very important at the high school level that we have educators who are in this space because even if a child's not part of an esports team but has the statistics to be recruited, let's just say, I always worry about that child who isn't necessarily recruited by a college but is going to be re recruited by a professional team where they're saying to the child, hey, we'll give you $30,000 and come live in Los Angeles and you play video games all day. And for some 16 year old or 17 year old, that may sound really great until they realize that it's a 18 hour day and, you know, they're moving away from mom and dad and they and they're basically working to to play video. And then video games don't become games. They become work and it becomes, an, you know, I always worry about those experiences and having at least us as educators at the high school level involved and working alongside you all at the collegiate level, having those conversations. Now we hopefully can find a fit where our kids are going to thrive as students, but also be the scholar gamers that you want to have at your college. Um, I think that that there's still a lot of room to grow there. And I know, for example, companies like eFuse um, 
uh, is trying to kind of bridge that gap right now, allowing kids to develop their social presence at, at various ages and make those college connections. And again, everything that you've done with NEC has really started to, I think, up the bar for a lot of people. You know, Harrisburg gets a lot of press, you know, but, you know, I look at a lot of things that Harrisburg does and you have done and I say, you know, you're out there, you're putting yourself out there more. You are, you are showing your program off a lot more. Um, I do love, for example, what Chris Haskell, Dr. Chris Haskell has done at Boise State University. Yeah. His background, you know, your background is athletics. His background is music. And he's all about the mindset. Hey, I was a band director. If a kid wants to play a triangle, I'm going to give them a triangle to play. Or, you know, if they want to hit a drum, I'll, I'll find a way to get them into the band. He's created roles for everybody, even those who are not gamers. But you've done more with not just with your students, but you've also done, I think, a tremendous job of getting sponsorships for your program. How have you gone about that? I know HyperX was just one you just announced, right? Yes. And you had your big on. If you go on to his LinkedIn, you can see the big unboxing of the swag that HyperX <laughs> sent. But what? who else are you working with now? How, how have you started to make these connections? Because there may be a lot of high school teams also who are looking to make these types of connections with companies. Yeah, I, I, just to get into that. So in terms of getting sponsorships, before I even got my bachelor's degree as a freshman, mm -hmm. I was first sponsored before I even competed just because it, it's just a natural thing. Just I just love people. I love to network and love to just learn from other people and dive into conversations. So I feel like that skill kind of just followed its way with me, and that's why my master's degree – it was a it was a bit easy because a lot of the things I did were self taught. Sure. And coming from the gaming background, I feel like gaming made it easier for me. I don't know why. It's weird, but it was just esports is a place where you can do your own thing. You can create the next best esports team. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like, imagine you going into your masters and you're like, oh, I'm doing all these things in esports, and I'm relearning just in a more professional way. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was for me. So like when it got into the, the corporate sponsorships at this level, like HyperX, uh, XSplit is one of our other sponsors, NEU Brands who does the merchandise and global uh, branding for Overwatch League, Forbes, E-League, and Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, and then going into um, eFuse. So it, it's just those those skills, the small small things that I started so long ago when I was young, just build on those skills. And and, you, and I'm still learning, mm -hmm. and I just keep building on and building. I'm like, okay, if I got HyperX, like wow, I'm I'm really thankful. Let me continue to push them and motivate our students to okay, like appreciate these things because when you look at other programs, it, it is okay to compare because. We know what it was like when we didn't have sponsors. And I remind them that when we do get to this place and where we are not to be comfortable, and I'm not comfortable, I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to get more companies involved. I want to continue to push myself. And I feel like the bar doesn't not ju just set where it's at. I feel like you continue to make the challenge for yourself and continue to climb Mount Everest um, in, in terms of your life and where, what vision you have. And I think those of uh, those of you who are listening to this or watching this who coach esports teams, you know that the grind never stops. No, <laughs> our you know football coaches have their you know ten or twelve seasons uh, games a season, and and they're starting in early August and you know going until January if they're lucky. Um, as we know here, at least in the Racine Unified School District, uh, my general managers. Uh, we got done with Overwatch and uh, and um, uh, Smash Brothers, and now we're right into spring, and it's Rocket League, and it's uh, League of Legends, and we go until the middle of March. So they've been going since September to March. It's a very long season, and then after we get done in March, we're still going to have some opportunities for some invitationals and some other things. So as you, you know, the grind, I, I'm glad that I could get you today on the podcast because I know the grind never stops for you. No, it doesn't. Like, I'm, I'm really serious about this. Like, my energy here right now is literally how I, I try to keep it every single day. And, and some days are different, mm. but th this is just who I am. Uh, and I mean that, uh, you know, some people 
you know, put on faces, but this is just my lifestyle. And I, I really appreciate and love what my wife does for me in terms of support because she supports this is just it. Mm -hmm. And her being a nurse makes it a lot easier um, for my career. Mm -hmm. And she recognizes that. So, you know, babe, if you're watching this, I appreciate you. And you're but, a father, too. Yes. A proud I'm a father dad. father of a little girl. I'm a very proud dad. I love my baby girl. She's turning one in March. Fantastic. But I, I just, I, I really make it a passion and a goal to just draw good good vibes and positive energy from as many places as possible. Even meeting people like you, this motivates me. Good. You know, like, so I, I really thank you uh, for doing this because you didn't have to. I, I feel like this is a, a good push for both of us. You know, you utilizing this market and, and stepping into the podcast. I feel like we need more content. We need uh, more people like you to really take the lead in an initiative to continue to do what you're doing now. So thank you for doing that. Well, and Terrell, we need more people like you who look at this and say, you know what? We could just do this on folding chairs and, and six yeah. computers in a blank room. But <laughs> as you've demonstrated from the space, from the sponsorships, from the Jersey production, from the social media outreach, everything that you try to do, you are trying to do it 100% and you're trying to do it as gold standard and high class. And I really appreciate you. And I, I'm, I'm somebody who, if you ever looked at any of our kids and said, hey, I would love to recruit any of your students, you're somebody who I would say, absolutely, um, you find out more if, if this college is gonna be a fit and let's work together and see if we can get some students from the Wisconsin area to come and explore New England. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I, I would love for them to take a tour. I personally give tours every, almost every day. Fantastic. So I'm welcome to it. I'm open. Well, Terrell Appleton, thank you so much for being on the, on the Academy of Esports podcast. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. That will do it for this week on the Academy of Esports. I've been your host, James O'Hagan. Esports are organized competitive video games allowing schools to redefine their athletic culture diversify opportunities for student participation, promote good physical and mental health, increase collegiate scholarship pathways, and play games. We can never forget the importance of play. The mission of the Academy of Esports is to support these ideals. The vision of the Academy of Esports is for all students to experience the fun and joy of playing competitive video games. You may follow me on Twitter at Jim O'Hagan. That's at J-I-M-O-H-A-G-A-N and through the Academy of Esports account at T-A-O Esports. It's a great way to get the latest blog posts, podcast episodes, and news coming out of esports and education. And remember, you can continue your engagement by going to www.taoesports.com. You can also connect through Facebook at www.facebook.com slash T-A-O esports. Thanks again for listening, and I look forward to our time again next week.